Friday, December the 7th through the 11th. We're looking at lesson 18, overcoming a second obstacle in factoring. What if there is a remainder? All right, so we're going to, um, our goal is to be able to rewrite simple rational expressions in different forms, including representing remainders when dividing. All right, so let's look at our uh, opening exercise. The first opening exercise says, write the rational number 13 fourths as a mixed number. Um, this is going back to elementary days. Try to think about how you remember how to write um, the improper fraction, they call them, as a mixed number. All right, if you remember, we would divide 13 by 4. And that would be 3. So that is our whole number. I can pull 3 holes out of there. Alright. 4 times 3 is 12. Which means I have 1 left over. So we would write that as 3 and 1 fourth. Alright. Um, there's several different ways you can do this. But that is the um, answer that we want to get to. Is that 3 and 1 fourth. All right, so then let's go ahead, and now we're going to look at um, our factoring here, our um, polynomials, and seeing how we're going to do this. All right, so the first example says find the quotient by factoring the numerator. All right, so it wants us to factor the numerator. Remember, numerator is on top. So we're going to factor that out. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and write my x plus 2 at the top. All right, um, so x squared would be x and x. It's plus plus, so I want to be able to add my factors of 2 to get 3. Um, so in other words, I'm going to use 2 and 1. And because it's plus plus, they're both positive. All right, now... Looking at this, x plus 2 divided by x plus 2 cancel, and so my answer would be x plus 1. All right, so if I actually were to divide this out, I would get x plus 1. All right, let's look at the second one. It says find the quotient. It doesn't tell me anything um, different, but let's see, can I factor it? Well, it's a plus plus which means I have to be able to add my factors of 5 to get 3. There is no way to factor 5, 5 and 1, but I would not be able to add those together to get 3. So obviously I have to look at um, something a little different. All right, so we already know that x squared plus 3x plus 2 divided by x plus 2 is x plus 1, as long as x is not equal to negative 2. So how could we use this to find this quotient? All right, well, what do we know about 3 plus 2? Well, 3 plus 2 is equal to 5. So there must be 3 left over after performing this division. All right, so let's pull 3 out, all right, let's pull that 3 out, and we're going to say that this is the same thing as x squared plus 3x plus 2 plus 3 over x plus 2, all right. Now, we're going to break that up and do x squared plus 3x plus 2 over x plus 2 plus 3 over x plus 2. All right? So what's the quotient and the remainder? Well, we already know what the answer is here. This is x plus 1. With a remainder of 3. Alright? So how would we write that? So 
So this is how we would write my answer. My answer would look like this. X plus 1 plus 3 over whatever I'm dividing by. Alright, so that is the answer. Now, I can, um, you can use the reverse tabular method. You can also use long division. Alright, and we're going to kind of work through some of these examples using some of these other methods here in just a few minutes. Find the quotient by factoring the numerator. By factoring the numerator. All right, so we got to factor this numerator. All right, now, I've got x cubed minus 8. Um, obviously, we're going to look to see if we can get x minus 2 out um, of this, of x cubed minus 8. All right, and we can. We can do that with long division. Um, I'm going to kind of skip that part for right now because this lesson is a little bit longer. Um, but when I do long division, this is what I end up with. X minus 2 times X squared plus 2X plus 4 over X minus 2. Alright, so now I see those two cancel. So my answer would be x squared plus 2x plus 4. So how can I use that to do this? x cubed minus 4 divided by x minus 2. I can use that, or I told you I'm going to show you a couple other different methods. Let's go ahead and use um, some long division here. All right? Um, you might be able to see the long division a little bit easier, but we'll do that. All right, so you remember when we do long division, we have to make sure all of our bases are covered. So I have an x cubed, but I do not have an x squared, so I've got to put a 0x squared. I do not have an x, so I'm going to do 0x minus 4. All right, so let's work our long division. So x goes into x cubed, x squared times. x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times negative 2 is negative 2x squared. And then I'm going to divide or subtract all of that. Those cancel. 0 minus a negative 2 is a positive 2x squared. And then I'm going to bring down my 0x x goes into 2x squared 2x times. So 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times negative 2 is negative 4x. I'm going to subtract. Those cancel. 0 minus a negative 4 is positive 4x minus 4. x goes into 4x 4 times. So I have 4x, 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, and I'm going to subtract. And you can already see that I'm going to end up with a remainder, all right? So 4 minus 4 is 0, negative 4 minus a negative 8, which is negative 4 plus 8, gives me a 4, all right? So I end up with 4. So look at my answer. My answer would be written like this. x squared plus 2x plus 4 plus, because I have a positive 4 left over, over whatever number I am subtract or I'm dividing by, 4 over x minus 2. And that's my answer. All right, that's all I have to do here. So now it says find each quotient by inspection, okay? So find each quotient by inspection. Um, inspection is what we did right here, all right? Where we kind of took what we knew and then um, figured out our answer. 
So, if I look at this, and I say, okay, obviously I want to take out an x plus 1. Well, if I take out x plus 1 here, I get 3. There, so I can rewrite this as x plus 1 plus 3 over x plus 1. Alright, so look at, this is what I get. I get my remainder of 3, so my answer would be 1 plus 3 over x plus 1, okay? Because when I, that gives me 1. When I divide x plus 1 by x plus 1, I get 1, and I have three left over. All right. Let's look and see what I want to do here. Um, I want to take out x minus three. So x minus three would give me x minus I want to pull that out, and what's that give me left? Or what does that, what do I have left? All right. Um, could I do more there? Could I pull out two of those? I bet I could pull it. I could pull out two x minus six. All right. So let's let's try that. If I two, pull out 2x minus 6, because that's a factor, all right, what does that give me left? That tells me that I have minus 1 left. And then look at this. How many times does x minus 3 go into 2x minus 6? What would I have to multiply x minus 3 by to get 2x minus 6? I have to multiply that by 2, right? So I get 2, that's where that comes from, minus 1 is my remainder over x minus 3. Okay. Alright, let's look at this one. x squared minus 21 um, divided by x plus 4. Alright, so let's think about this for just a second. Um, I can pull out, obviously, I can try to do that x plus 4. Um, I can multiply that times, all right, um, well, let's see. If I take out x plus 4, Four, that would leave me with x minus 17. Okay, so let's work through this one. Alright, if I take out x, my, or x plus 4, that would leave me with x minus 17. Okay, look at this. That would be x minus 16. Plus minus one, sorry, minus one. Okay. Um, so that one kind of doesn't work. Alright, I'm I'm showing you how we could look at this, and it doesn't quite work the way that we want it to. Um, so we would have to figure something else out. All right. Um, this one's a little more difficult to see with the inspection. So instead of spending forever and a day um, doing this, guys, at some point in time, if you want to jump to another method, you can. All right. You do not have to stick with the inspection. 
like I said, you may see um, the long division a little easier. All right, so instead of racking our brain trying to figure this out, let's go ahead and look at this in long division form. So I have x squared. I don't have any x's. All right, so x goes into x squared x times. So I have x squared plus 4x. I'm going to subtract that. I get negative 4x minus 21. So I'm going to take out negative, or I'm going to multiply negative 4. So negative 4x minus 16. Subtract. So negative 21 minus a negative 16 is negative 21 plus 16, which leaves me a negative 5. Much simpler, so I know that my answer is going to be x minus 4, all right, minus 5 over x plus 4. So let me show you something here, what we could have done. All right, and I'm going to go back and show you the inspection just because I, I want you to see this. Um, instead of trying to pull something out, here's what I could do. I could say this is the same as x squared minus 16 plus 5. All right, actually that would be minus 5, sorry. Minus 5. And then I can factor x squared minus 16 into x plus 4, x minus 4, minus 5, and then look at what I end up with. Gone, gone, x minus 4, minus 5, and that's my remainder. Okay? Once again, guys, I'm showing you different methods. Use whichever one you find um, easier. This one was a tricky one. You have to be careful with it. All right, find the quotient by using the reverse tabular method. Okay, um, I'm not a huge fan of the reverse tabular method just because I think sometimes it confuses people. Um, but let's look at it. So this is my answer. So this is what I'm going to get. talk about how to do the reverse tabular method um, with this because like I said I'm not a huge fan of it um, so because here's what I have I've got 10 here I need to get 10 and nothing times negative 8 gives me 10 all right so I've got to figure out um, what's going to happen here um, 
So let's go back for just a second, and we'll kind of use one of these problems that we've already answered. Um, that way we can kind of see what the reverse tabular method would look like. Um, let's go back to part B, where we did x squared plus 3x plus 5 divided by x plus 2. Okay? Now, when we did this, we did um, inspection. Um, and we know how to do long division. But let's look at the reverse tabular, reverse tabular method for a second. So, when I draw this, all right, I've got to come up with x squared, 3x, and 5. So, I know it's going to look like this, all right. And I am dividing by x plus 2. Two. Now, let's look at this. This has to be x squared. So let's start with that. x times what gives me x squared? So that would be x. Alright, so then this would be 2x. This has to be a 1x. We're not going to fill this in, and I shouldn't have done that on the other side. We're not going to fill this in just yet. We're going to work it this way. All right, so we fit, figured out our first term. This is 2x. I need 3x. So I have to get an x here. So that has to be a 1. So this is going to be 1x. Then that means this is 2. But I need 5. So I need to look at this. 2 plus what gives me 5? 2 plus 2. 3. This right here is my remainder. And if you remember, look at what we have. Our answer was x plus 1, and then our remainder was 3. Alright, so let's go back here. I need to take that out for a moment. Alright, we have filled this in. Now, I've got a 4x. I've got negative 8x. What does this have to be in order to give me um, a positive 4x? Alright, well, negative 8, in order to get a positive, i got to be bigger than 8. So, this has to be a 12. So, 12 times x is 12x. That would give me my 4x. And then let's look at this. 12 times negative 8 is negative 96. Okay? Now, I need a positive 10. So since this is negative 96, I've got to have something bigger. So this, i got to think about this. What number is going to be bigger I'm going to add these two together. So 106 minus 96 would give me my positive 10. So my answer is going to be x plus 12 plus 106 over x minus 8. Okay? So that number that I use to get to where I need to be is my remainder. All right, let's look at the second one. So I have x cubed minus x squared plus 3x minus 1 divided by x plus 3. All right, so let's look at it. This is what I'm going to have. I'm going to end up with x cubed here, x squared here, 
3 x here and negative 1 here. Alright, and I'm dividing by x plus 3. So x times what gives me x cubed? That would be x squared. So x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times 3 is 3x three squared. Now, let's look at this. I need 1x. Alright? So what has to go here to get a positive 1x? Alright, that has to be what? A negative 4x. I'm sorry, that needs, yeah, that needs to be negative, sorry. So I need a negative x. So I need this to be negative 4x squared. So x goes into negative 4x squared, negative 4x times. So this would be negative 4x times x is negative 4x squared. Negative 4x times 3 is negative 12x. Alright, so now, let me make sure I got my signs right, I need a positive 3x and I have a negative 12x. Alright, so how do I get, this one's got to be bigger than negative 12. All right, and I need it to be positive. So this has to be a 15x. Because if I add those together, I get a positive 3x. So what times x gives me 15x? 15. 15 times x is 15x. 15 times 3 is 45. Look, guys, I need a negative 1. All right? So let's look at this. What plus 45 would give me a negative 1. Negative 46. So that is my remainder. That is my remainder. So here's my answer. x squared minus 4x plus 15 minus 46 over x plus 3. Okay. All right, let's look at the last one. x squared minus 2x minus 19 over x minus 1. All right, so let's look at this. I'm going to get x squared here, negative 2x here, negative 19 here. And I'm dividing by negative, or x minus 1. All right. So what times x, this has to be x squared here. Because that's the only thing. Remember, I, I add my diagonals. So I in order to get x squared. So x times x is x squared. So then x times negative 1 is negative 1x. All right. Adding this diagonal, I need negative 2. Well, I had negative 1, so what plus negative 1 gives me negative 2? So this needs to be a negative 1x. So x times what gives me negative 1x? Negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1. When I add this diagonal, it does not work. It is not the same. So I need to know what plus... A negative 19 would give me 1. All right, what times a negative 19 would give me 1? I'm sorry, what plus 1 would give me a negative 19? I've got myself turned around here. What plus 1 gives me a negative 19? negative 20. That is my remainder. So my answer here would be x minus 1 minus 19 over x minus 1. Okay? Oh, see, I've got myself turned around. 20 is my remainder. I told you I'm not a big fan of reverse tabular. All right.
Find the quotient by using long division. All right, using long division. All right, let's look at this. We've just got a few more problems, guys. All right, x plus 6, x squared minus x minus 25. All right, what times x gives me x squared? That would be x. So I have x squared plus 6x. Subtract. Negative x minus 6x is negative 7x. And bring down your negative 25. What times x gives me negative 7x? Negative 7. So I have negative 7x minus 42. Subtract. 20, negative 25 minus a negative 42. So that becomes negative 25 plus 42, which would give me 17. I know, I'm, I, know I have a remainder because I have 17 left over. So my answer is x minus 7 plus 17 over x plus 6. All right, x plus 2. Let's see, I have x to the fourth. No x cubed. I have x squared. No x plus 12. All right, so what times x gives me x to the fourth? Then the x cubed. So I get x to the fourth plus 2x cubed. Subtract. 0 minus 2 is negative 2x cubed. Bring down a negative 8x squared. What times x gives me negative 2x cubed? That would be negative 2x squared. So I get negative 2x cubed minus 4x squared. Subtract. Negative 8 minus a negative 4 is negative 8 plus 4. So negative 4x squared. And I'm going to bring down my 0x. So I get x times what gives me negative 4x squared. So negative 4x. Negative 4x squared minus 8x. Subtract. 0 minus a negative 8 is 0 plus 8. That's 8x. And bring down my 12. What times x gives me 8x? plus 8, 8x plus 16, and I get a negative 4 as a remainder. All right, so here's my answer. x cubed minus 2x squared minus 4x plus 8 minus 4 over x plus 2. All right, and then the last one, 2x minus 5, I have 4x cubed, no x squared, plus 5x minus 8. 2x goes into 4x cubed 2x squared times. That would be 4x cubed minus 10x squared. Subtract. 0 minus a negative 10 is 0 plus 10, so 10x squared plus 5x. 2x goes into 10x squared 5x times, and be 10x squared minus 25x. Subtract all of that. I get 5 minus a negative 25, which is 5 plus 25, so I get 30x minus 8. 2x goes into 30x 15 times. So I get 30x minus 75. So I get negative 8 minus a negative 75. So when I um, when I subtract that, all right, 
um, I get 67. So my answer is 2x squared plus 5x plus 15 plus 67 over 2x minus 5. Okay? Rewrite the numerator in the form of x minus h squared plus k by completing the square. Then find the quotient. Alright, um, so if you remember completing the square, you may or may not. Um, it's been a while since we've done that. Um, but we are going to take an plus 4x plus something minus something, minus 9. Okay? We take half of this, which is 2, and then square it. So 2 times 2 is 4. Okay? So then I can um, factor this. then I have negative 13 here. All right, so I end up with x and x, 2 and 2. I'm sorry, that should have been subtract something and add something. I'm sorry, that I did that wrong. So I would end up with one positive, one negative, because I want one of those to cancel out. So I get x plus 2 with a remainder of negative 5. All right. Over x plus 2. separate sheet of paper. You can use any of the methods that we've used, um, reverse tabular, long division, um, if factoring, whatever. But make sure you're showing your work. All right, guys, have a great week.